Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And obviously, as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now we've almost reached a point in the series where we can talk about the famous mean value theorem. However, before we are able to prove it, we first have to talk about local extrema and the theorem of Roll. Hence today we will do the whole groundwork we will need for the mean value theorem. So let's immediately start with the definition of a local maximum. For this let's fix an interval i and a function f. Now in order to understand what we want to define, let's visualize the graph. So maybe we have something like this. And a point like this we want to call a local maximum. Or more concretely we are interested in the point x0 at the x-axis. In this case we would say the function f has a local maximum at this point. Ok, and now of course we should think about what this should essentially mean. Now the value of the function at this point does not have to be the maximum of the function. However, it should be maximal when we only consider a neighborhood around this point. Or to be more precise, we only consider a neighborhood around the point x0 on the x-axis. And this one we simply call u. So we just need a neighborhood in the real numbers and if you want you can choose an epsilon neighborhood. And of course it just have to be small enough such that our condition here holds. Hence in the formula this would mean that f of x0 is equal to the maximum of the function when we only consider points from the neighborhood. Hence we have x in u intersected with i. With this intersection we also include points that lie on the boundary of the interval. Otherwise it's exactly the same thing we explained here in the graph. And there you also see we can do the same thing for a local minimum. Therefore I would say let's add this to our definition. So we say the function f has a local minimum at the point x0. If there is a neighborhood of x0 also called u such that f of x0 is the minimum of the function when we restrict it to the neighborhood u. So you see it's exactly the same definition as before just with a minimum. Then finally we have the last part of the definition which is about local extrema. In fact this is just a name to combine both maximum and minimum from before. Hence we say f has a local extremum at x0 if f has a local maximum or a local minimum at x0. So you see this is not complicated at all but maybe I still show you some sketches. Therefore here in the coordinate system we have our interval i as a bounded one. Then for example the graph of f could look like this. And there you see on the left boundary we have a local maximum. And on the right hand boundary we have a local minimum. Moreover another local maximum we also find here. Also another local minimum we find here. So please don't forget a local maximum could look like this. But of course when we deal with differentiable functions something like this cannot happen. In fact for differentiable functions we have a very nice necessary condition for local extrema. So let's put this into a proposition. However we don't have this condition for boundary points therefore I immediately choose an open interval as the domain. Now our assumption here is that at the point x0 we are interested in the function is differentiable. And then we have the following implication. If f has a local extremum at x0, so a local maximum or minimum, then f prime of x0 is equal to 0. So the derivative has to vanish at this point. Now please immediately note here this does not work the other way around. Now both things we can immediately explain in a picture. For example if we have a local maximum here the slope at the point if it exists needs to be 0. So we have a tangent that is horizontal. However this horizontal tangent can't be sufficient for a local extremum. Because we also have it at this point for such a curve. And there at this point we don't have a local minimum and also not a local maximum. Therefore please always have this direction here in mind. Ok then I guess we are ready for the proof of this statement. And there we will distinguish two cases. Namely we first consider that f has a local maximum at x0. And then obviously the second case will be that f has a local minimum at x0. Ok then by the definition of a local maximum we can conclude that there is a neighborhood of x0 we call u. 
Here, very importantly to note is, because we have an inner point, we can choose the neighborhood inside the interval AB. Otherwise, we have the same property here, namely f of x0 is the maximum of the function when we only consider points from the neighborhood. Now, in the next step, what we can put in is that the function f is differentiable at our point x0. This means we have a linearization around this point. In general, this means we can write f of x as f of x0 plus x minus x0 times our slope function delta. And here, please recall, the important property for differentiability is that this function here is continuous at the point x0. This is now what we can use to show that the slope at x0 is 0. Intuitively, it makes sense that we have it, because if we would have a tangent with a positive slope, then we cannot have a local maximum here, because the value will increase when we go to the right. Therefore, let's try to prove this. So we assume that at the point x0, the function delta, which is the derivative, is greater than 0. Now, since we have continuity, we also know the function is greater than 0 in a small neighborhood around x0. Let's call the neighborhood v, and of course we can choose it as a subset of u. Now, this is the important property we can use to construct a contradiction. As a reminder, another way to interpret this property here is to think of secants. If the slope of the tangent is positive, then you also find a small neighborhood around x0, such that the slopes of the sequence is positive as well. However, now if we have this, we cannot have a maximum at x0. You immediately see this in the picture, because on the right hand side of x0, we find larger values than at the point x0. We can also show this when we use our identity here. Because here, if x is in the neighborhood v, we have a positive number. And if we choose x on the right hand side of x0, this is also a positive number. In summary, all points x in the neighborhood fulfill that f of x is greater than f of x0. Which simply means that f of x0 is not a local maximum. Okay, then let's look at the second possibility here, that f prime of x0 is less than 0. There you see, we can just flip the picture from before and do the same argumentation again. So we can take a neighborhood v in u, such that we have the negative slope in the whole neighborhood. Now the only thing we have to change from before is that we now look at the left hand side. Because then both factors in the product on the right hand side are less than zero. Hence the product itself is positive again. Which gives us exactly the same contradiction as before. Therefore in summary we know these two cases here are not possible at all. So the only possibility that remains is that f prime is exactly zero. Which is exactly what we wanted to prove. Now to finish the proof, we just have to do the second case. Which means now instead of a maximum, we consider that f has a local minimum at x0. However, I don't think I have to write this down, because now we have all the ideas and you can do a similar proof as before. In fact, what I want to do in the next minutes is to show you the important theorem of Roll. This one is applicable if we have a differentiable function on a compact interval. Now it's important that we have these two boundary points a and b. Because we need the assumption that f of a is equal to f of b. Now in the picture in a graph this would mean we start here at a given value and then the function can do a lot of things but we end at the same value again. Then the claim will be that we find at least one point where we have a horizontal tangent. And this point on the x-axis we will call x hat. In other words, we find x hat in the interval such that f prime of x hat is equal to zero. One important part here is that x hat is not a boundary point, so we have an inner point of the interval. Okay, I would say Rolle's theorem here seems very natural. If we have such a function like this, there should be a local minimum or a local maximum somewhere. Therefore, let's immediately try to prove it. Let's again start with a simple case, namely that the function f is constant. Then of course it's differentiable and fulfills the condition that f of a is equal to f of b, but also the derivative is equal to zero. And this holds for all x in the whole interval. So we can simply choose any point for x hat and we are finished. Hence the only interesting case is that f is not a constant function. Okay, and now we can use that f is defined on a compact set and by assumption differentiable. 
which in particular means it's a continuous function. And for these we know the image of a compact set is also a compact set. This is what we have proven in part 30. In particular we have proven that we always find a point x minus where the minimum occurs and a point x plus where the maximum occurs. Now of course one of the points could lie on the boundary. However, because the function is not constant, the other one cannot. And exactly this one we can choose as x hat. Therefore this means we have the maximum or the minimum in the middle somewhere. In fact it's the global maximum or minimum. Which is of course also a local one. Hence we can simply use the proposition from before. Which tells us that the derivative vanishes at the local extremum. And with this the proof is finished. In fact this nice theorem of all we can use in the next video. Because there we will prove the famous mean value theorem. Therefore I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.